everyone, I'm Samantha, and today I'll be reading for you Marshall the Courthouse Mouse, A Tale of the U.S. Supreme Court by Peter and Cheryl Shaw Barnes. Hear ye, hear ye, all rise and draw near. America's mice, with good will and good cheer, are pleased to announce, and proud to report, the opening term of the Mouse Supreme Court. The court now in session is nine special mice. They're all very smart, and they're all very nice. They are called justices, and their great contribution is to guard and protect the mouse constitution. The one in the middle, with the bars on his sleeve, is the chief justice, Marshal J. Mouse, we believe. All justices are equal, but he is the one who makes sure the work of the court all gets done. This court, the High Court, is the one most renowned, but there are other courts too, if you just look around. There are courts in each city and county and town. The mice even have a few courts underground. In all of these courts, a judge is in charge they sit at a bench, a desk very large. But lawyers and juries can also be there to help judges make every court just and fair. Our laws are the rules that all must obey to be a good person or mouse every day. These laws say be careful when riding your bike so you don't end up hitting somebody you like. Another law says that it's not right to steal a book or a candy or an automobile. And laws say that everyone must go to school. Don't you agree that's a wonderful rule? But one group of laws stands above all the others, declared long ago by our nation's forefathers, who wrote down on paper through long days and nights our grand constitution and our great Bill of Rights. These documents gave us, you really should read them, a promise to all of liberty and freedom. They gave everybody the freedom to vote, the freedom to worship, and also please note, the right to free speech and the right to decide how to live your own life, how to live it with pride. These rights are so special, we all must respect them. The Supreme Court's job is to preserve and protect them. It does this whenever it chooses to hear a question or case of a law that's unclear. For disputes about laws aren't all that unusual. In fact, some laws can be unconstitutional. Here's an example the Mouse Congress created. It once passed a law that directed and stated that mice could not eat the same cheese every day. It was a strict law all mice had to obey. It said that on Sundays they had to eat cheddar. On Mondays it was Roquefort, which they liked better. On Tuesdays everyone ate mozzarella, from the smallest mouse girl to the biggest mouse fella. Each Wednesday Swiss cheese was on every plate, on Thursdays, Parmesan everyone ate. On Fridays, American cheese was supreme. And Saturdays, just Philadelphia cream. But some of the mice had thought all along, this law is confusing and odd and just wrong. Each mouse family should always be able to put any cheese that it wants on the table. But other mice liked the rule, thinking it good. They wanted the cheese law to stay as it should. So one side against it, one side in support. Who decides? Why, of course, the Mouse Supreme Court. According to practice and legal tradition, the process must start with a special petition that says there's a question so big and involved, it's something that only the High Court can solve. In this case, the justices had to address this difficult question, which went more or less, does the cheese law deny any mice, large or small, their constitutional rights, any at all? 
To make a decision, the justices start with oral arguments from lawyers quite smart. Each lawyer discusses one point of view. The justices listen and ask questions too. But justices need more than that to decide, so they have special helpers called clerks who provide extra research and work, and at the start of each fall, the chief justice meets with the clerks, one and all. I'm sure you all know, the chief justice said, how important your work is, how much is ahead. But the work may not be as hard as it looks. To help in each case, you should all hit the books. So off to the library they run in a dash, then into the bookshelves they fly in a flash. There are clerks at each desk, there are clerks in each chair. There are books piled up. Books and clerks everywhere. This work can take weeks, sometimes it takes months, while the justices study and meet more than just once, in private, in conference, to talk and review, to decide on each case, to decide what to do. In the cheese case, Marshall stood up from the table. Fellow justices, he said, I am sure you are able to see that this case has a simple solution, for it's plain and it's clear from our great constitution that its words and its meaning grant a most basic right that allows any mouse with a good appetite to choose the cheese that he or she wants for a meal, Swiss, blue, or cheddar, whatever they feel. This means that the cheese law, I'm sure you can see, must be struck down now, constitutionally. Hear, hear, said the others, we consent and agree. And they voted with Marshall unanimously. To give their decision, the justices next wrote down in opinion their words put in text. And by court tradition, what they had agreed was printed on paper for all mice to read. The justices also hand down their decision, announced from their bench with care and precision, read aloud by a justice a great declaration to all who are gathered and the rest of the nation. In this way, their decision is spread far and wide. It proclaims the new rules by which all must abide. Each decision makes sure that we all understand that our great constitution is the law of the land. And that night, at the tables of mice everywhere, there were all kinds of cheese to enjoy and to share. Thanks to nine justices who care and support and protect all our rights at the great Supreme Court. The end. Thanks for listening.